Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So I just uh, filled up another sketchbook last week. And today in this video, I'm gonna show you my process just finishing on the last page of that sketchbook. So it took me, it took me three months and a half to finish that sketchbook. And it's actually, it took me longer than usual because I was um, focusing a lot of my time finishing up my master's thesis paper. And sometimes I had to skip a day or two just to focus more on writing. So that's okay. So, but it's still a really consistent basis. I always come back to sketching again after a day or two or not sketching. Otherwise I feel really bad. I feel like something is lost in life. So I spend about 30 minutes up to one hour every day to work on my art journal. It's a really nice way to kind of um, break away from the everyday hassles and just focus on the moment on um, right now, just allow time to slow down and um, you know, for the mind to focus on a really peaceful point. So I've been sketching in my art journal on a really consistent basis for 10 years now. So this year is the 10 year anniversary of my art journal journey. So most of the sketchbooks that I've used over the years have an average 60 pages each double-sided. So usually I give myself a pretty flexible deadline to finish it in two months because two months is 60 days, right? So about one page a day. But sometimes if life gets really busy, I don't force myself to finish it within two months. If it's taking three months, that's fine. Um, I don't like to give myself too much pressure because um, I just want this process to be a really a natural one instead of um, instead of for it to be a really fixed chore to do every day. It's, it's just a way to relax, it's not a chore. And I think that if you make this sketching in sketchbook work more like um, a relaxing way to be, to be yourself rather than like doing chores, you're more likely to, um, to, have a, to have this consistent habit to keep it going for years and years. And that's how it works for me because I, I, I don't treat it as a chore for, for artists that you have to work on one or two pages or many pages a day. That's, that's okay. I don't give myself a really strict rule for doing this. I just, uh, I just pick up my pen and my water and my watercolors, you know, any moment when I feel like to. Or one time, when a time when I really need the time to um, to slow down in life and relax, try something different rather than staring at the computer or um, looking at my phone for too long. I like to break away from those stuff and just grab my sketchbook and be with it. Have enjoy my time with it for thirty minutes to one hour. Okay, so this is the last few page spreads of my art journal that I just finished. So this Christmas season, we had a lot of snow. We had a white Christmas in Vancouver. And you've probably seen these process videos in my previous video posts here on YouTube. And this is the last page spread. The very last page, I sketched two carnations and a flower vase. I, we got these two carnations from a ceremony. I decided to add the uh, dining table behind so, um, so these two flowers don't look too stiff on the page. I wanted this table and the chair over here to support this set. Okay, so now let's get started with a tutorial video. Okay, so here with a cup of coffee, I'm ready to start working on the last page of my art journal. So before I start putting a line work on paper, I'd like to spend a minute or two to visualize the size, proportion, and placement of, of every single important part on the white blank space first before I start drawing. So now 
I'm ready to start drawing the outline of the carnation on the left. After the outline, I'm starting to draw the really pretty abstract lines inside that defines the petals. So these petals are folded in different shapes and sizes and in different positions. So I'm really understanding what I see and draw what I understand. And after drawing the base underneath the flower head, now I'm drawing the stem. It's a pretty thin organic thing. And then now I'm drawing the neck of the vase starting to draw the other carnations stem and the little leaf building it up and then the base of the flower head linking it with the outline of the carnation flower it's a little bit tilted after the outline i'm drawing the really fluid forms inside which are the petals some are a little bit squished some are more opened up just following what I see and what I understand. And now I'm using pretty simple hatching lines to add the shade around the stem and around the base of the flower. And then finishing drawing the neck of the vase and the stem coming down through transparent and the upper body of the vase. Continue the distorted view and the carvings on the vase and that's pretty much it for the drawing part now I'm ready to paint watercolors so I just wetted the flower area with clear water by squeezing my water brush the very first layer is magenta very much diluted with a lot of water and then light green for the base and the stem Okay, now moving on to wet on wet, the second layer, very thin green for the flower base and the stem. And second layer, wet on wet, I mix in a little bit purple into the magenta pink and just apply this um, bit of shade color around the inside in between the flower petals here and there. I'm making sure I'm not adding too much because I want to preserve the fresh pink color. So the colors that I see in real life is actually pretty different from the reference photograph that you see right now. Because a snapshot done with a phone cannot capture the accurate color, especially for something that is really, um, it has a really light tone like these light pink carnations. Okay, so now I am painting the flower vase. It was a pretty very watery layer of green. And then mix ultramarine blue into the green to get a gray turquoise color for the shade of the glass here and there. And the even darker tone of blue. Just so now it looks more glassy there. And now I just want to add a tiny bit more contrast for these carnations by mixing a tiny bit of ultramarine blue into the pink. Because the day is getting darker and um, it's very late in the afternoon, it's getting dark very soon. So these light flowers are having more contrast now. And now, as I mentioned before, I decided to paint the dining table behind just to make sure this vase is more balanced on the page and mixing a little bit ultramarine blue into this pink brown to add the reflections on this um, glass covered dining table okay nice and loose a little bit of shade inside the vase and around it so now i am painting the chair behind so the uh, table and chair are both mahogany nicely designed and carved 
So now I'm using my medium tip water brush to get these details painted well. A little bit shade too. And mixing blue into the green to paint the shade part of the flower base. Bit of outline for the table, just to make it sharper. A little bit of contrast for the inside of the flower vase, so it looks more shiny, like crystal glass. And that's it. And here's the look of my finished sketch. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And I will see you again very soon. Have a great day. And just a quick reminder that the first class of the beginner's drawing and painting starts this Saturday, January the 15th. So you can still sign up. So I did the first session of the Sunday sketch together last Sunday and there's still three sessions left that you can sign up and the price has decreased. You can find the links to sign up for both classes in the description part of this video.